Hi everyone and welcome to today's oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 24. Oh, and in the spirit of the holidays, I've decided to have a special sale at my website. So for a limited time, you can get 15% off and a free mystery gift with any order. The code is HOLIDAY and you can redeem it at happyd-artist.com and it ends December 25th. Today's video is brought to you by Skillshare and I just wanted to thank them for supporting this channel and the art community. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 17,000 classes taught by professionals in fields ranging from art to photography to cooking to computers. And at less than $10 a month, it is one of the best deals out there for quality online education. I've been familiar with Skillshare for a while now and I can honestly say that they truly do have so many different thorough and in-depth classes that can help you improve your skills in many different sectors such as composition, anatomy, drawing, painting, watercolor, so many different mediums. And as a special gift to my viewers, Skillshare is offering a two-month free trial for the first 100 people that sign up with the link in my description and also on the screen. Okay, on to today's topic of discussion, and that is regarding finances and money. And I know that in each video, I always preface them by saying that these are only based on my personal experiences, so feel free to disagree with me or feel free to not take my advice. On this particular video, I want to hammer that point in even more because I know that finances are a very sensitive topic and that each person is in a completely different situation, so my experiences definitely do not reflect the general public or perhaps even you know the the average artist experience mine my situation is completely unique to me and so i really hesitated before making this video because it feels awkward to talk about money and i didn't want someone following my advice and then ending up in a rough spot i didn't want to be the cause of someone you know suffering more so I just want to say that I'm only making this video because I've gotten asked this question a lot and I feel like it would be helpful, but as usual, please, please do not take this as an instruction manual or a set of guidelines. Um, these are simply my own experiences and my own tips that work for me in my stage of life, in my current location, my country. Um, so yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys are cautious before I begin this video. Okay, so no more dilly-dallying. Let me just begin. Finances as an artist can be quite tricky and quite difficult and at times extremely scary and stressful. I had the lucky opportunity to work before I became a full-time artist. I was very fortunate that I worked for three years and I was able to save up some money to support myself. And also I got to live with my boyfriend so that wherever we lived, we would split the rent in half. So that alone um, took a huge financial burden off my back right off the bat. Um, but I know that not everyone was, you know, is in my situation. A lot of you guys listening to this right now might still be in school or you might not have a current job yet or you might have a job where it doesn't pay that much to allow you to save up enough money. So my first tip on how to handle the rough finances of an artist is to save money before you decide to become a full-time artist. I can't speak for other creative careers, but I know that art, especially with like freelance painting and drawing, and even if you have a social media presence, art income is very unpredictable. So sometimes even when you have a large social media following, it doesn't guarantee that will translate into sales. And my biggest, I guess, source of um, courage and confidence when I made that big that leap was having some money in my bank account to afford me to live for a year-ish um, on a very frugal lifestyle, of course, but living for a year-ish um, with the 
expectation that I would make no money. So I would say have enough in, in your bank account for a few months to a year, depending on what makes you feel comfortable. Um, have enough savings to support yourself in case you don't make any income. And that is a huge possibility. When I first began my art career for the first year or so, um, you know, it was very sporadic. The only months where I would make significant enough money to pay my rent from my art income and not have to dip into savings were the months that I was lucky enough to sell an original or land a commission. Um, but yeah, most of the time I had to burn through my savings and, and that was really a safety net for me when I was trying to ramp up my art career, ramp up my social media and my online business. So having money saved beforehand is really, really helpful. And I know that not everyone will um, has that opportunity. Um, a lot of you guys might have families to support or like I said, might still be in school. So if you cannot save any much money beforehand, I also think a good alternative is to get a part-time job. And this was something that I considered and something that I kind of halfway did. Um, my part-time jobs were basically I picked up any sort of opportunity that I could find to make money off of art and I did many things like I would um, teach those paint night classes once I did like photography for a startup conference um, because my friend hooked me up with that gig so I would just take my DSLR and take photos of the speakers and the various conference activities you know just odd jobs here and there I also made sure to make myself as available as I could for commissions. So um, not only did I publicize that on my own website, but I would reach out to friends. I would have my friends reach out to their friends and I would just find whatever means I could to make money off of doing art, which is what I preferred. But I remember at the time, I also considered doing jobs that perhaps had kind of odd schedules. For example, the general population works a nine to five, Monday through Friday. And as an artist, you have this rare luxury of being able to design your own time and design your own schedule. So I was thinking about jobs that would allow me to work, let's say evenings and weekends. Then it would allow me to work on my art during the day. And you know, I felt like because I was available for very rarely um, rarely sought after schedules and, and night shifts that it would make it a little bit easier to find a part-time job. Um, so yeah, that's another solution. Also, I would suggest that you track down and write down everything from your spending to your earnings and also the costs of doing business. So the money that you spend on living necessities, the money you spent on, you know, leisurely activities and also the money you spend on art supplies and various things that relate to your business. When you write things down, it's kind of like um, when you lose weight, it helps to write down what you're eating. Um, when you're trying to budget, it definitely, definitely helps to write things down. I really recommend this website called mint.com and they also have an app and uh, this is not sponsored by the way, this is just something that I use. Mint.com was super, It's it lets you set weekly and monthly budgets and it alerts you if you go over your budget. It also tracks all of your earnings and all of your spending. So if you're spending more than you're earning, it'll also let you know and it's just a really good way to keep yourself in check. And I also think that set you do have to sacrifice if you want to transition to becoming an artist and if you don't have a lot of money saved like for for penny pinching uh, purposes I do have some tips on how to save money the biggest one is to go out less I think you would be surprised at how much one night out can cost um, if you add up your uber ride or the cost of gas cost of parking along with you know not just drinks but dinner and then you have tax and tip Usually a night out, which might seem fairly simple and not super fancy, can cost me over $100 because Uber rides in San Francisco are so expensive. So when I went out less, I noticed that I was able to save so much more money. So instead of eating at restaurants, I would cook and meal plan. Instead of going out drinking with my friends, I would invite them over for you know, board games and a potluck. So there are so many ways you can um, save money if you just go out less and there's still ways to definitely be, uh, be social and see your friends. You can go on hikes, you can have dinner parties, the list goes on. And lastly, I think another tip is 
even when you are able to have a fairly lucrative art career and you have a really good month where you earn a lot of income, I would say still budget, still follow your cost saving plans because in your good months, you have to prepare for the bad ones because like I said, art income is unpredictable and you never know when you're going to need to rely on savings to get yourself through a tough month. So yeah, these are my tips and I hope you guys found them useful and I hope you enjoyed this oil painting time lapse as well. The original for this piece has already sold, but I do have prints available at my website at happyd-artist.com. And just a quick reminder to use your code HOLIDAY for the special holiday discount of 15% off and a free mystery gift. If you're interested in checking out a 35 minute version of this video that includes a helpful voiceover answering questions, along with color mixing guidelines, work in progress photos, high quality close ups, and many more other fun daily rewards, feel free to check out patreon.com slash happydartist. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye!